Aloha, welcome. I'm Abaya, and I'm grateful to get to share this practice with you. Today's practice was inspired by jumping on the trampoline. <laughs> we have a really awesome trampoline here at Konalani. And yesterday, as I was jumping on the trampoline, my legs felt so strong, and I could feel my core supporting my spine. Um, and I felt really powerful, and that's what I wanted. That's the kind of energy I wanted to bring into this sequence today. So we'll be focusing on the core, we'll be focusing on the legs um, for strong foundations that really allow us to ascend physically, right, decompressing our joints, but also energetically, because when we feel really stable, then there's a lot of space for energy to flow. Uh, so that's my goal today. Satyam, you can go full screen with me. Um, and so I know you can't see it yet, but you're welcome to spread out a blanket. It might help with um, some of our standing stuff. You don't have to, but I, I like to have the feedback of the texture of a blanket. So if you want to try that, you're welcome to. Um, a couple of blocks might be handy if you like to have blocks under your, your hands um, in a lunge, or even if you don't like to, if you want to try that, it can be really helpful. With that, let's begin. So um, take a turn to your right and make your way down onto your back. And if we did this right, your left arm should be closest to me. Bend the knees, soles the feet to the floor. Let the feet come nice and wide so you can relax the thighs inward towards one another and they can relax. And then the hands can come wherever is comfortable. I like to have my hands on my belly, but do whatever feels best for your shoulders. And then if you feel comfortable, try closing the eyes. Try closing the mouth and breathing through the nose. And see if you can start to feel your body resting on the earth. Maybe you've had a busy day. Maybe this is the first moment of stillness. Or maybe it's really easy to feel your body. We're all coming from different spaces, different backgrounds. And then as the body softens and relaxes, perhaps you can start to feel the breath flowing in and out. And you don't need to change the breath in any way. Just let it be, just observe. As you breathe, sometimes it's easiest to feel the chest or in the front of the body. See if you can also feel the back of the body expanding, breathing into those forgotten places, maybe literally areas of the lungs that you haven't breathed into before. And just notice your state of being as you're relaxed on the floor, breathing. Eventually in class today, we'll make our way up to standing and be doing some stronger, challenging things. And my goal is that you can bring this presence, this relaxed, smooth breath, this relaxed state of being to all things that we do in class today. So with that, we can begin with a, a little bit of movement. If you're following along with the playlist, you can hit play on the first track. And bring your hands to your pelvis. This is my favorite way to integrate the core. It starts by rocking the pelvis forward and backward. And sometimes people get confused on what forward and backward mean. And so all it means forward is just that you're rocking the weight towards the bottom of the pelvis or towards the tailbone. And back means you're rocking the weight up towards the top of the sacrum or to the low back. And so rock forward and back and just start to feel the back of the pelvis moving. Maybe the pressure points change of what's contacting the floor. 
You might even notice the spine moving, the head getting a little massage here. Let your movements get smaller and smaller. And smaller is actually stronger. It takes a lot more awareness, coordination, and fine-tuned strength to move smaller. So be patient and compassionate with yourself. It's hard. Try moving a little slower. And try finding neutral. And a neutral pelvis is when the spine is long. I notice when I find my neutral pelvis, I like to tuck my chin and lengthen the base of my skull further away. It's almost like my whole spine is like, ooh, I have more space now. You might notice that. Try to keep the back of the pelvis heavy on the floor. Imagine your feet are stuck to the ground. Exhale, slowly um, unweight the right foot, but it doesn't move anywhere because it's stuck. And notice how that challenges your core. Try to prevent the pelvis from tipping. Inhale, release that foot, and then exhale, other foot. And so just play with unweighting one foot at a time. And the most important thing here is noticing what this unweighting action does to your core. Hopefully, you feel like the integrated strength is dialed up a little bit more. And maybe you can even lengthen all the way through the spine. And I didn't get to say hi to everyone before because all those technical difficulties. So hi, everybody. I'm so excited to see you, especially our recent Konalani visitors. I'm so glad we can stay connected from afar. If this is going well and you feel like you can unweight the feet without rocking the pelvis, try letting one leg lift a little bit and then try the other. I like to keep my hands on my pelvis because sometimes it's hard to know if it's tipping or rocking, so that can just help give you a little bit more feedback. And then place both feet back down, reach the hands towards the heels, and anchor the big toes. We're going to go for a bridge pose, so start to reach the knees forward and up slowly, undraping the spine, and then place the spine back down. Do a few of these lifts and lowers and see if each time you repeat, you can move a little smoother or maybe you wake up a little more awareness. And I notice some people have their feet kind of far forward. Shivo, Jamie, I think it might feel good if you walk your feet a little bit closer in so when you lift, the knees are, are more over the ankles, but do whatever feels best for you. If you feel ready, you can stay lifted for a few breaths or keep pulsing. It's up to you. If you're staying lifted, a fun experiment is to imagine unweighting one or both feet. I know you can't actually lift your feet here, but you might notice how the core will naturally support you more. And then you can see if you can extend more. Nice, Marcel. I feel like you, you were able to extend a lot through your spine when you did that. That was awesome. Take one more breath. And then slowly, one vertebra at a time, start to melt the spine back down to the floor. Lift the feet and start to point and flex the feet. And try to be gentle here because I don't want anyone getting any cramps in the feet or in the ankles. But see if you can notice what changes in your legs as the feet point and as they flex. Maybe draw some little circles with the ankles. And then bring your awareness back to your pelvis. You may have arched your low back or rounded it here. So see if you can refine that neutral pelvis and exhale, start to draw the abdominals in to support the front of the spine. Bring your arms to a T, palms face or up, Palms face up, if that feels okay. That's my favorite for my shoulders and open chest. Start to point the toes, gently draw the legs together, and just notice how the adductors fire and see if you can use that strength to lengthen through the spine. And then without hinging the hips more, so keeping the feet at 90 degrees or further, start to circle the legs really small at first without rocking the pelvis. 
right? And notice, you might say, oh, that's impossible. My pelvis is going to move. See what happens when you try to not move the pelvis. You might start to feel more muscles in the core waking up. If it feels good and if you feel integrated here, you can make bigger circles, but that's not the goal. Um, so just explore what feels best and play with pointing the toes a little bit more and see if that helps you get a little more length through the legs and a little more ability to circle and start circling the other direction and notice how the circling might be impacting what's happening in the shoulders and in the arms. See if you can keep drawing the abdominals in. Right, a doming or a bulging in the abdominals is indicating that you're overcompensating with muscles that we don't actually want to be using. So try to keep everything hugging in and that means you're using your deep core here. Nice. All right, that's enough of that. Place the soles of the feet back down. We're gonna do one more bridge pose. So you can naturally go into bridge and just notice if it almost feels weightless after that counter movement. Maybe you feel stronger. Maybe you can feel the power coming from the legs up into the core, allowing you to articulate your spine. Release the spine back down. Hug the left knee into the chest and try another bridge just with the right leg pressing down into the ground. Take a few pulses here, lifting and lowering. Anchor the right big toe and reach the knee wide. That's going to help fire the glute. The whole point of a single leg bridge is firing the glute. If you know you have weak glutes or if this feels really challenging, just keep both legs down and just unweight one foot instead of hugging it in. Nice job, everybody. Take one more on this side. Feel free to hold it and breathe. And then gently, slowly release one vertebra at a time and switch sides. Now that you know what we're doing, go at your own pace. I just want to observe a little bit. One glute is often stronger than the other. So be curious, are you doing your strong leg right now or are you doing the leg that needs a little extra strengthening? Make sure that left knee or whichever knee is uh, the supported leg feels stable. You might need to adjust where the left foot is and then be sure that big toe is anchoring down. If you liked holding it, feel free to try that. Just make sure you're breathing and there's no strain anywhere. Nice. And then gently release down. We're going to be coming up to seated. If it's comfortable, you can rock and roll forward and back. If that's not comfortable, just come up to seated and we'll meet you there in a moment. The next time you roll forward, even though my back was really mis <laughs> being massaged there, but class must continue. Let's just turn three quarters. Um, I like to go this way so that you can see what my spine is doing, and then that way you might be able to watch me a little bit better. Let's pr play with Navasana. Um, if you're following along with the music, you can go to the second track at this point. So... It's in my climbing bag. Um, so with Navasana, it's really common that people round a lot in the low back. So we're going to try to lengthen, especially from the low abdominals. So nice, Yukie. I know it's probably extra hard right now. <laughs> and so um, just to experience that, let yourself slouch for a moment. And then bring your hands behind the thighs gently pull on the thighs and see if you can use that strength to lengthen and reach up from the low back without creating strain between the shoulders. Most of you are meditators, so you know that feeling of being tired and strained between the shoulders. We do not want to use those muscles. We don't want those muscles to feel tired. We want all the strength to come from the core. So pull a little bit on the legs, kick a little bit with the legs and see if you can lengthen Look from side to side just to make sure there's no tightness in the neck or shoulders. And then as you exhale, point one toe and lift it. And then inhale down and exhale the other one. 
and just play with going from one foot to the other, seeing if you can maintain your long spine. If this feels easy for you, um, try doing it hands-free. And then let's hover both legs, option for hands if you'd like. And we're going to be rolling towards me just a little bit. So allow your body to recline a little bit with control so that the hip is coming onto the earth. Roll towards me, left forearm down. Point the toes. Don't let the toes touch the ground. I know you want to let the toes touch the ground, but we're not going to reach the top arm long. Um, so you're like a banana shape. We have about 200 bananas right now. Um, Jamie's doing a great job of drying them all and freezing them and we're eating them, but now we have more bananas. We have like 12 more human bananas <laughs> in the house. And then we're gonna go back into our Navasana, hands free or not, and do this a couple of times on your own, getting as long as you can. See if you can feel the work in the core and how that allows you to reach and be strong through the legs. You might notice each time you come into Navasana, it gets a little easier. Or maybe it doesn't. Maybe you're like, no, I'm more tired. <laughs> we, we got some laughs in the house here. So that's okay if it's not getting easier. Last one on this side. So let's pause for an extra moment and just make sure you feel even through your whole body, right? Like if you feel like the shoulder's working too hard or the core, see if you can just soften and let everything help a little bit more maybe even smile <laughs> and then come back to center and we're going to go the other way so you're going to be rolling away from me but same action so recline just a little bit so you can roll on the hip right forearm down reach through the top arm and point through the feet hovering them just above the ground and then come back to your or your navasana Move at your own pace. Maybe going slower than I'm showing is better for you. And I know this is challenging, uh, so maybe appreciate the lovely massage that happens on your hips when you roll to the side. You're so strong. You're so integrated. <sighs> and then we'll meet in our boat pose one last time, but this time we'll bring the soles of the feet together and allow yourself to sit up nice and straight and just notice, nice Shivo, notice if that feels easier after. Um, it's a lot harder when the legs are straight, right? So you might feel like, wow, I can sit up so tall right now. And if you can't, bring the hands behind you and try to lengthen that way. If it would feel good, um, you're welcome to walk the hands forward, but that's not comfortable for everyone. So only do that if the body's craving it. And from wherever you are, leaning back, upright or forward, just gently rock from side to side. Gently squeeze the feet towards one another, really, really gently, but just so the legs stay awake. And maybe you can even feel the legs connecting up into the core in this way. Cross the right foot over the left. Plant the left hand behind you. Lift the right hand towards the sky. Let the knees drop over to the left so that you flip to tabletop and start to paw out the hands underneath the shoulders. We're not really doing a lot with the arms today. Um, so just give your hands and shoulders a little bit of love right now so they don't feel left out, lower from one forearm to the other and then back up to the hands. And then go the opposite way. And even though we're focusing on the arms and shoulders here, see if you can bring awareness to your pelvis. And just notice if you can find a neutral pelvis here, just like we found when we were on our back before. The next time you come into tabletop, walk the hands forward, one hand print. Rock the pelvis forward like a little bit of a cow pose, rock the pelvis back, cat pose, draw the abdominals in so you really feel strong and a lot of support in the low back. Keep all that strength as you rock the pelvis forward again. I find when I do that, my pelvis doesn't go as far forward because the limitation of um, those muscles being toned. So just notice that. And then make some circles with the hips 
trying to keep that strength that you've woken up. If you've lost the strength, come back to the low back cat, draw the abdominals in, and then rock the pelvis forward again. It definitely took me some time, my body some time to figure that out. I like that I changed me to my body, where it's like two different entities <laughs> working together. We're a good team though. Um, tuck the toes under from your neutral pelvis. Exhale, hover the knees, and then set them back down. Take a couple of these on your own and try to feel when you exhale and just hover them an inch. That's going to wake up more even strength in the body. The next time the knees hover, push into the hands, send the hips up and back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, but keep a deep bend in the knees. I find that's really helpful for most people's spines. Press into the outside of the hands and try to reach up through the hips, decompressing through the spine. If it's comfortable, the legs can lengthen a little bit, but try not to round the spine. Max, try bending your knees more and push into your hands a little bit extra to reach the hips up and back to where the wall and the ceiling meet behind you. Yeah, that was a great adjustment. A little more knee bend might help, but you're definitely on the right track. Yeah, good. Anju, those cues I think would be helpful for you too, if you were listening. <laughs> Start to sway the hips from side to side. Drag one hand in at a time. We're making our way into our forward fold. Um, bend the knees really deeply because I don't want you to feel this in your hamstrings or your low back. If this isn't comfortable, you're welcome to come up a little higher. If it feels good, you can drape your body on your thighs and let your the back of your neck lengthen so the chin tucks a little bit. Anchor the big toes. Start to rock forward and back and feel how when you rock back, the heels plug into the earth. You might even feel your calves and your hamstrings. When I, when I do this, I feel my glutes almost catch my hips from and prevent me from falling backward. The next time you rock back, pause there. Bring your hands to your hips and start to push your hips forward. And this is going to roll your spine up one vertebra at a time. Try to feel that low back cat supporting the vertebra. And then just take a moment to let yourself be still in Tadasana. If you're following along with the music, you can go to the third track now. Take a couple of breaths in Tadasana. And then walk towards the center of the mat. Turn to face me and take a few little hops, just letting the feet land right underneath the hips. This is how we've been exploring finding Tadasana in our level one training. The next time you land, look down at the feet, turn the toes forward so that the second toe is parallel with one another. So you might feel like it's a little pigeon toed and that's okay. It's going to help you with the next step, which is pressing down with the big toe and spiraling the thighs open so that they gently hug in to the hip socket. Hopefully you feel a spiral from the big toe to the outer hip that feels really strong and supportive. And then relax through the shoulders. The palms can turn forward. We'll take a couple more Tadasana breaths. Be aware of your spine here. Everyone looks really good. Notice if you can feel how your core is supporting your spine after all that core work we did. And then shift the weight into the left foot. Get light on the right foot, but the toe is still down. And I'm going to throw a medicine ball to all of you at the same time. So ready? Here we go. Catch the medicine ball. Awesome. Keep that weight. Let it be like a pretty heavy medicine ball. So you're like, pr you're, you're really solid. It could be a watermelon. That's sort of more fun, actually. <laughs> Start to rotate to the left and drag the right foot behind you as you do that. And then rotate to the right and allow the foot to point forward. Do this a few times on your own, letting the left leg be your pillar of strength. Anchor the left big toe. Try to feel that glute spiral that we were awakening in Tadasana. 
and then start to play with this a little bit. I'm going to turn just so you can see as you rotate into the left leg, see if you can reach a little bit further back with the right or a little bit further forward. And if that doesn't feel good or you're like, I can't hold the watermelon anymore, um, then just go back to the smaller movement, but play with it. Nice, and try to feel the whole body working together as you do it. So it's not all in the shoulders, it's not all in the legs. The next time the leg kicks forward, um, cheat it forward a little bit extra. I'm gonna go back just so you can see both of my legs. Take that little twist forward. Make sure the feet are nice and wide from left to right so the pelvis feels really steady. And then look at the back foot. Everyone's foot looks really good, but I want you to get to know your feet. So look at your back foot. Make sure the back toes are mostly forward, but then maybe slightly turned out to the left. Your rug might be a little slippery. That's okay. It's great for your core. So as long as you're not scared of like falling down, um, just be okay with that little extra challenge. From here, let's lift and lower the back heel a few times and just wake up some awareness in the back leg. Nice. And then the next time the heel lifts, bend into the front leg. Let that the front heel be really heavy because we don't want to feel any pressure in the front knee. If your weight shifts into the ball of your foot, you're going to feel more pressure in the patella tendon. So weight in the heel, and then it's very safe for the knee to bend any amount that it needs to. Start to hinge forward slightly at the hips. You might feel a little work in the hamstring and the glutes, and then slowly lift the back foot and then tap it down. Take a few of those leg lifts, trying not to move the upper body and the pelvis at all. We're waking up the glutes again. So the same muscle that you're waking up in that single leg bridge pose, start to float the arms back like an airplane. The next time the leg lifts, lengthen through the whole back side of the body without moving your pelvis, start to tuck the knee forward and then reach it back again, toes come down, hands up, and then just a little knee dip or a big one if that feels good, but you don't have to lower the knee all the way if that doesn't feel good. And we're gonna repeat this. So shift forward, deep bend in the front knee, float the arms back, lift the back foot, the glutes engage without moving your pelvis, tuck the knee in. You might not be able to bend the knee very much. I do not want you rounding like this. You're staying as long as possible through the body and just letting the knee sneak forward and it should feel like great work for your core. And then the foot steps back, arms lift, gentle lowering of the knee, any amount that feels good for you. And one last time. So shift forward. If any of those movements felt really interesting, you're like, I just want to stay in this modified Vera 3, you can totally do that or just try moving a little slower, a little more intentionally. Make sure you're breathing. <sighs> and then we'll eventually all meet in that movement where the back knee lowers. Um, at this point, let's grab blocks because this may be a really nice counter pose here. Blocks on the highest height. Walk your right foot over to the right, hands to blocks. Imagine there's a quarter underneath the back knee and just start to circle your weight around the quarter. Keep the front big toe anchored and just be aware of what the front knee is doing without trying to control it or micromanage it. Just make sure there's no uncomfortable pressure in the front knee. It should be gliding pretty effortlessly. Circle the hips the other way. Oh, my favorite thing, Anju, dog and cat playing together. <laughs> so fun. All right, lift the back knee. Bring the back foot in any amount that helps um, this feel comfortable. And I guess as long as we're here, we can take a moment and Parjvottanasana. So look at the back foot again, same orientation as before. The toes are mostly forward, um, but maybe slightly out to the left. 
try to press evenly into both feet. You can leave the blocks where they are and slowly shift the weight so you can roll up one vertebra at a time. Grab your watermelon, twist to the right, and then slowly start to twist to the left, gliding the right foot back and pause in your Tadasana. Take one moment in Tadasana. We did a lot of movements on that one side. Maybe you feel the muscles that have been activated or strengthened. And just notice as you feel more and more supported, any sense of lightness, any sense of flow that's available. And now we'll do that on the second side. Can you put the clock on the screen, please? Um, so we'll shift the weight over into the right foot this time. You got your watermelon once again. Bend the right knee. Make sure there's weight in that heel. And the right side is your pillar of support. So you'll start to glide the left foot back and rotate to the right. And then glide the left foot forward, rotate to the left. And now that you are familiar with this, again, play with it on your own. A lot of you are yoga teachers, so if you are inspired, please add on. The goal here is to feel really long and spacious. Try to feel how the reaching of the foot allows you to lengthen through the spine. You can start to play with lengthening the stance, but only if the upper body can follow that. You always want to feel like you're reaching up and lengthening the spine. The next time the left foot comes forward, pause there. Make sure you've got a lot of space from left to right. Look at the back foot and everyone naturally landed in an awesome place, which is why I love the step forward for our Vera One stance, but it's always good to check out your feet. Hands on the hips, equal weight in both legs. You might need to cheat that front foot forward a little bit, which is totally fine. And just start to play with lifting and lowering the back heel. And move nice and slow here because you know what's coming. That front leg's going to be working pretty hard. So enjoy this massage on the back foot and ankle. The next time the heel lifts, Pause there, start to bend into the front knee, plug in the left heel so you have a lot of support. You might even feel the glute and hamstring fire as you do that, and then start hinging forward at the hips. And then come back up and do that a couple of times so you feel really integrated and supported. Try to keep weight in your back foot even as you hinge forward and your core will be more awake there. The next time you hinge, reach the arms back and slowly start to lift the back leg without tipping the hips forward. Release the foot down. Do that a couple of times. If the pelvis stays unmoving and just the leg lifts, you'll feel a lot more strength in the glute. The next time the right leg lifts, pause there without moving the pelvis. Start to curl the knee in any amount. The spine stays long. And then step the foot back, lift the arms. This time the heel stays lifted so that we can dip through that knee. You might just dip down a little bit. You might dip down a lot. Just make sure you don't feel uncomfortable in that back knee. Lift up, shift forward, modified Vera 3. And then curl the knee in and try to use that curling in to strengthen and lengthen through the spine. Reach the foot back, arms up, little dip here. And then last round, add, subtract, pause in any of these movements. Make it your own. Enjoy the process. Make sure you're breathing. And then as the toe steps back, reach the arms up slowly, Lower the back knee down, however is most comfortable for you. Hands to the blocks, foot walks over to the left. Anchor the left big toe. Now there's a quarter underneath the right knee. Start to circle the weight around that quarter, just letting the hips follow, letting this be as smooth as possible.
and tuck the back toes under, lift the back knee, slide the back foot forward until you can bring the heel down. Rock weight evenly into both feet. Option to bring hands up to hips or you can keep them on the blocks and just gently press into the feet, lengthen through the back of the body. Keep the spine nice and long. Great modifications, everyone. I see everyone adjusting to their best form. And then let's slowly soften through the knees and press the hips forward to roll up one vertebra at a time. Grab your watermelon, twist, let's see, into the front leg, and then slowly start to untwist so you can step that front foot back and your watermelon magically disappears. And pause for a moment. You can stay in Tadasana or you can float the arms. And just take a moment to feel the support of the legs and notice any sense of freedom that waking up the legs and core has provided in the spine or the mind. And just drop into the breath, drop into the heartbeat. And then relax the arms down. Um, two options here. Because this was inspired by a trampoline, I did <laughs> want to have a little bit of jumping. But if you're not really feeling like jumping or it's late where you are, um, you can do this statically. So I'll show you both options. I'm turning just so you can see what I'm doing. Um, we'll come into a chair pose anchoring the big toes, um, and then either float on to the tippy toes um, and pulse like that, or take a little jump. Um, so it's your choice. Coming on to tiptoes is awesome, so don't feel any pressure to jump. Oh, but it looks like some people are having some fun with that. So if it's fun, go for it. And you can take little jumps. You can take big jumps, try to honor what the body feels prepared for. Make sure when you land, the weight's going into the heels and the hips are reaching back, and then the knees should feel really um, supported. You don't want the pressure going into the knees. Imagine almost like your glutes are catching you, and hopefully that'll feel a lot more supported. The next time you land in your chair, let's just see if there's a little extra room for squatting a little bit lower, and then drape the body over the thighs. Hands can come to the thighs, the shins, or the floor. Take a couple of breaths here. Notice your heart heartbeat. And then lower one knee at a time. Keep the toes tucked under as long as it's not uncomfortable. Bring the hips onto the heels. And just take a moment to absorb while you stretch your feet. <coughs> and then bring the hands back down and circle the hips a little bit so that you can stretch your feet now a little bit more from side to side. Just exploring how the circling of the hips impacts those flexed toes and dorsiflexed ankles, circle the other way. And flatten the tops of the feet to the earth, sit over to one side, kick your legs out in front of you. Let the legs start to squeeze together um, like you've got a mermaid tail. And then place your fingertips underneath your hips and lower one elbow at a time. <coughs> Without moving your elbows, start to drag them back, allowing the front of the body to open. If this doesn't feel good on your shoulders, you can do the same thing upright with the hands turned out. And I find that can be a lot more friendly, so feel free to try that. Press 
through the balls of the feet or point the toes, whatever feels best for you. And as you exhale, just start to lengthen through the front of the spine, gazing up for a nice neck strengthener. Stay here or curl the knees into the chest, rounding forward and then slowly extend back into Matsyasana fish pose. If you liked that pulse, you can take a couple of them or you can hold. And at any time that you feel ready, you can start to recline down into Shavasana. If you haven't already, the next time you come into fish, slide the arms from underneath you and let the body release and notice any sense of letting go that's available. If you were following along with the music, you can pause it at this point. Tune in to the body here. That last movement was a back bend, and so you may feel like you need a counter pose, or you might feel like completely balanced at this point. So if you need a counter pose, you can hug the knees into the chest or do anything else that would feel good, like a happy baby or a little bit of rocking. <clears throat> and then give yourself the space to spread out and soften through the hips, the knees, and the ankles, the shoulders, the elbows, and the wrists every joint of the spine all the way up to the neck you can just finish by gently looking left and right massaging the back of the skull on the floor behind you And then coming to center, if you need any props, I'm sorry I didn't offer them before you got all relaxed, but feel free to do what you need to do. <coughs> and we'll have some time to absorb in stillness and in silence. And so now you can let go of any strength that was activated and just start to tune into the breath and anything deeper that began to open as you felt supported and activated and we'll rest here
start to watch your breath and notice how fluid and effortless it is. You didn't have to do anything or think about it over the past 10 minutes and it just existed perfectly. Imagine that your breath is massaging and energizing your cells. And just shine awareness through the space behind the eyes and down the jaw, the neck, across the shoulders and heart space, through the arms the torso, the hips, legs, and feet. And just notice any sense of ease or contentment in your mind, in your body, and in your energetic self. Visualize yourself in your most radiant form and you don't have to know what that looks like. And just let it come to you, just bursting with joy and happiness, vitality, balance. Imagine yourself in this way seated in meditation an effortlessly strong and balanced posture supported by the hips and legs with ease and strength and this deeper flow of energy circulating through you and then imagine that that visualization is like a magnet and it just starts to pull that state of being up to the surface you can leave everything else behind and slowly let those highest parts of yourself make their way up to seated however you like to get here best Just notice if the seat feels balanced, steady, yet pleasant. And that is the conclusion of our hour long class. If you have some availability, I'm going to guide meditation for the next 15 minutes. So you're welcome to stick around for any of those minutes. You don't have to commit to all 15. Um, but your seat is ready and your energy is ready. So you might really be craving that. So you're more than welcome to stick around. And if you're doing that, feel free to grab a chair or a cushion, props behind the knees, a drink of water, a quick bathroom break, whatever you might need. And don't feel bad if you have to go. This was not even in the newsletter it's just a surprise but i want to meditate so you're welcome to join me and i'll just give everyone a moment to get situated and if anyone needs to go thank you so much for practicing to this point
Looks like Teddy wants to meditate too. That's great, Teddy. <laughs> All sentient beings are welcome to join this meditation. <laughs> so you can keep taking your time, settling in. There's no rush. I do invite you to notice how your practice has prepared you. And there's sort of the most obvious way that hopefully the physical body feels comfortable, the hips are open, the spine is supported. And then maybe you can feel that deeper level of preparation where the mind is calmer, more steady and present. And the breath is natural and fluid. And whether you can feel it or not, I'm sure that the subtle energy is also riper after that practice. It may even be the true reason you stayed. And that inner craving or contentment is the opening of these energy channels, the flow of your subtle energy. And give yourself permission now to let the physical body start to drop away. It's there, it's supporting you, you don't need to think about it or do anything. And let the breath be your focus. And start to favor the exhale. Not in a restricting or intense way. Just feeling the softness of the exhale through the nose if possible. The complete releasing that's possible as the breath is released from the body. Your focus can drop deeper into the heart center completely unrestricted. And as you allow that emptying out to occur, just notice the feeling when you're completely empty of the breath. Everything pauses for a moment. And you're not holding your breath, but just allowing yourself to rest in that pause while it feels natural. And then the inhale just naturally occurs and you drop back into the exhale. And that slow, steady, smooth, complete.
Attach the Om Namah Shivaya mantra to each inhale and exhale. And let the mantra be as soothing as the natural breath, as quiet and gentle and effortless as the natural breath. Yet, the mantra has an energy, a charge. And so though it's gentle and natural and relaxed, see if you can trust that it's guiding you more deeply. Trust that it's helping you to have an experience of the inner self. See if you can be excited and curious about how using this mantra can help make your meditation more fruitful right now in this very instant.
can close with hands together at heart center. Thank you so much for sharing this practice. It's wonderful to see each of you and practice with you. Namaste. Anju and Marcella, see ya on Friday, Max. See ya Saturday. Roseanne, see you soon in person. And Yuki, so special to see you. How are you feeling? Wow, so happy for you. You look amazing and beautiful as always. Thank you for being here all the way from tomorrow. And thank all your pets for visiting, everybody. I love getting to meet your furry little friends. Aloha.